Over the past month, smart centers is up about 12.68%. Despite this, looking at the one-year chart, they're still down 24.27% from their February highs. And if we head over to the five years, we can see that smart centers is trading far below their five-year average. Hello and welcome to the Financial Future Guide. I'm your guy and I'm your guide. My name is Alex and today we're looking at my all-time favorite REIT, Smart Centers. Smart Centers trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under ticker symbol SRU.UN and they currently pay a dividend of $1.85 Canadian annually, which equates to 7.63% of their current stock price. Smart Centers was the first video that I ever put up here on this channel, the first analysis that we looked into. And as a dividend investor who loves reaping the benefits of REITs and collecting all those dividends and distributions, it's definitely a company that I recommend to all dividend investors. And as of a couple days ago, they did release their Q3 presentation. I thought what better time to come back and have a quick look at this company and maybe bring it to light for those who are unaware of it. And for those that do know about it, maybe this is your time to jump in. Now, at any point in this video, if you're enjoying it, if you like it, leave a like. And if you want to see videos similar to this one, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell button to get a notification every time I upload. All right, so there's a bit to cover, so let's get right into it. Smart Centers has 166 properties all located around major intersections, and they have a solid tenant base with 50% of their rent coming from strong, credit-worthy, essential service tenants, including Walmart, Loblaws, Shoppers Drug Mart, Canadian Tire, Lowe's, Dollarama, The Banks, McDonald's, and many more well-established companies. A brief look at Smart Center's timeline, we can see that Money Man Mitch back in 1989 to 1994 helped bring Walmart to Canada. Through this, he helped develop 175 Walmart stores across the country. And then in 1999, Walmart said thank you very much for that and partnered up in a joint venture for 100 shopping centers. It was in 2015, Callaway REIT and Smart Centers merged, in which Callaway's name on the stock exchange changed to Smart Centers. In 2016, Smart Centers' strategic focus evolves to mixed-use diversification, and we'll get into that shortly, as it is definitely one of the most important things that Smart Centers is doing. And in recent years, they have partnered with a range of companies on quite a few joint ventures that'll greatly improve the future of the company. Finally, back in 2019, Smart Centers launched Smart Living and this is all about growing their residential portfolio. So Smart Centers is actually starting to diversify away from just retail and getting into some other areas of real estate, which I think is very important for the long-term sustainability of this REIT. Today, Smart Centers closed at $24.09, down 16 cents on the day, or 0.66%. They have a market cap of $4.098 billion, a PE ratio over the trailing 12 months of 28.58 and earnings per share of $0.84 cents Canadian. The retail real estate sector took a big hit this year. We can see that in their one-year range, where Smart Centers has traded anywhere between $14.58 and $32.49 Canadian. Now, this dividend is so fat, it would struggle to walk through a wide door and most likely not be allowed to play on the bouncy castle. So don't worry, we'll take a look at the dividend and I'll let you know if it is safe and if Smart Centers will be able to continue paying it in the future. Simply Wall Street is a great tool for all investors and they offer an estimated fair value based on the cash flows the company is expected to generate in the future. Their fair value estimate of Smart Centers is $39.27 Canadian. This would mean that Smart Centers is 38.3% undervalued based on this metric. It's also good to look at the price to book ratio in which companies that are below one could be potentially viewed as undervalued, whereas those with a higher price to book ratio may be trading at a premium. And for those who don't know, price is the price of the company and book value is the value of a company's assets on their balance sheet minus any depreciation that that asset might have incurred. So taking a look at smart centers, they trade at a 0.8 price to book ratio, which as shown below is in line with the industry. But as always, we like to look at some of their competitors. So here we have RioCan that trades slightly lower at a 0.7 price to book ratio. And then we have Choice Properties that trade at a 1.3 price to book ratio. These three are some of the largest retail real estate investment trusts available to us in Canada. And what we can see from this is smart centers may currently be trading under value. Smart Centers was paying a dividend of $1.54 per share, which came to a yield of 7.9%. 
Now, over the last decade, that dividend has continued to grow. However, so has the stock price. Due to this, we can see over the last five years, Smart Centers has been paying a dividend between 4 and 6%. Fast forward to March, where Smart Centers took a huge dive in the stock price, we can see that the dividend got up to 9.2%. However, as the stock price has began to recover, this has dropped down to the 7.6% we see today. Overall, this is fairly positive with dividend growth since 2014, and I expect to see them continue to grow this in the future. So as this is a REIT, their payout ratio is calculated from their adjusted funds from operations or adjusted cash flow from operations. Smart Centers currently has a payout ratio of 88.8%, which is a little bit higher than their five-year average. However, they have been able to continue to pay this, and below 90% payout ratio, I don't expect them to need to cut this anytime soon. A big part of Smart Centers is their executive chairman, Mitchell Make It Rain Goldhar, in which we discussed previously, he sold his development platform to the REIT. He is personally leading the REIT's massive redevelopment and intensification program, and his strategic business relationships, including Walmart, directly benefit the REIT. He's also recently agreed to a five-year arrangement, so he will continue to provide his services and help guide and lead the company for years to come. Now, our main man, Mitch, actually owns $432.8 million worth of this company. That actually comes to over 10% of the total ownership of Smart Centers. And what's even more impressive is my man Mitchell has been buying up this company like crazy. Purchases of 1.5 million, just shy of a million, 363,000, 1.8 million, and I can go on and on. He has been buying this company up like there is no tomorrow. Seeing this kind of insider buying is an extremely positive sign to see for an investor. To know that those at the top are investing their own capital, believing in the future of the company when they are the ones with access to all of the documents, the records, and they have that inside knowledge of what the business is doing, provides me with that extra comfort. Those that are managing the company are not only doing what's in their best interest, but in the interest of the company, as they will too benefit from this. So as I mentioned before, Smart Centers released their third quarter investor presentation just a couple of days ago. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at that now and I'll take you through some of the highlights. For smaller Canadian retailers, the government had introduced something called the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance and this was a program that ran from six months from April to September this year in which the tenant pays 25% of the rent, the landlord pays 25% of the rent and the government pays 50% of the rent. So it's evident that the pandemic did affect smart centers, but it's great to see that something like this was in place, which would have greatly assisted both the retailers and smart centers. In terms of their rent collection, which is obviously super important, as this is how the company generates the cash flow, we can see that since May, they've had a steady climb up, and as of September, 96.1% of the rent was collected. It is important to note, however, that this does include rent collected from that government program, which brings the total to 96.1%. However, if we look down here, the rent collected without this program was 89.5%. The company has already identified 94 properties for intensification. So to give you an idea on how the intensification process works, you have your lot, your property. Most of these are anchored by Walmart, as you can see this large building here. And instead of buying more property and building things like these, the company is choosing to develop the current space. The goal is then to create something like this. Building these spaces into communities and what really looks like small cities makes much better use of the space and helps diversify smart centers into the residential real estate market. This also greatly benefits the retailers that are renting space with them as they're going to have a much larger population of people in the area, which will obviously increase foot traffic and sales. This will also mean that retailers are more likely to choose smart centers to lease from as they know that their properties are going to continue to be developed and essentially benefit the retailer from leasing from them. Now, it's proven that Canada's population continues to grow and the majority of immigrants do choose to move to Ontario. I like how they are focusing on the intensification of Ontario as I think this will have the largest return for the company. So those 94 properties which have been selected for intensification are made up of 256 individual development projects. These include self-storage, office buildings, apartments, senior living, condos and townhouses, and hotels. The big focus here is on apartments in which they have 88 projects that they're working on. 
Finally, we'll look at the total return to shareholders, and Smart Centers has an average return of 12.9% since its initial public offering. Looking at the graph, Smart Centers has not only outperformed the TSX, it has also outperformed other REITs traded on this exchange. So in closing, I really like Smart Centers. I think they're a great company. They have strong management and the strategies that they have developed to diversify and grow their current assets will allow the company to be a key real estate player in the Canadian market. Smart Centers is still down significantly from their five-year average. And at these prices, the company simply is greatly undervalued. Full disclosure, I do have a position in this company and I have been adding to that frequently over the last few months. I'm very bullish on this company and expect to see them do well in the future. Now that's all for today's video. Remember to do your own research before investing in any company. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to see videos similar to this one.